Ever since the Financial Times joined with the Chicago Council to launch the Pritzker Forum on Global Cities more than five years ago, I've always viewed these conferences as a rare chance to celebrate urbanism. Cities can be easy targets, particularly for those who don't live in them. And for even those of us who live in Brooklyn or, or Lincoln Park, we can find them maddening places sometimes, filled with snarled transportation hubs, long DMV lines, and overpriced restaurants. But what has made the Pritzker Forum so unique, and to me enjoyable, has been for all our city's faults, we've been able to highlight how they've served as bulwarks against some of the most disturbing recent political and economic trends. At a time of rising nationalism and chauvinism, they have continued to embrace immigration and multiculturalism. As national leaders in the US and Europe have peddled protectionism, they have been champions of free trade and globalization. And when white supremacy became a shockingly mainstream political movement, cities provided fertile ground for the growth of the Black Lives Matter campaign. But even those of us who are inclined to celebrate our cities must admit the last year has been a difficult one for urbanism. The pandemic and its associated economic crisis, as well as the racial justice issues thrown into stark relief by the Black Lives Matter protests, have not put our cities in the best of light. Racial and ethnic minorities in our cities have suffered from COVID disproportionately and then struggled to get vaccinated. Police forces in our biggest cities have continued to protect and defend officers in their ranks with clear track records of excessive violence against African-Americans. And the economic downturn has thrown a disproportionate number of Blacks and Latinos out of work, particularly in our cities, where service-based industries like restaurants and hotels continue to suffer which is why I want to add my voice to Evo's in thanking today's panelists for joining us to discuss how, to borrow that phrase from President Biden, we can build back better, not just economically, not just healthily, but with equity for all of us who make cities our home. One of Chicago's favorite sons, Rahm Emanuel, is often credited with popularizing the phrase, never let a good crisis go to waste. I'll be honest with you, I have always found that saying a bit trite. To me, it absolves our leaders from doing the difficult work of reforming our institutions when they could actually prevent a future crisis. I much prefer John F. Kennedy's admonition to repair the roof while the sun is shining. If we had invested in public health networks before the pandemic, if we had rooted out bad apples in police forces before George Floyd was apprehended, if we had removed barriers to economic opportunity before the lockdown, the last 12 months would have been much, much different. But since we didn't do that roofing repair before the current omni crisis, it is incumbent upon policymakers to tackle these issues as we hopefully return to some semblance of a normal life in the coming months. In many ways, we are now forced to take Rahm Emanuel's advice. Many of our cities and making them more equitable is a worthy goal, but it's not an easy one. If it were easy, we'd already be doing it but we are in desperate need of new ideas. I worry that most of the solutions now being discussed revisit policy debates from a distant past. On the left, people are urging a New Deal-sized expansion of the welfare state. On the right, anti-immigration policies reminiscent of pre-war nativist quota systems are touted nightly on cable news. Is that really all we can offer? A decade after the financial crisis called into question much of what is now known as the Washington Consensus. Where are the policy entrepreneurs finding creative solutions for the great radical center that understands the need for change, but abhors extremism in all its forms? Shouldn't our cities be the incubators of those solutions? It is a tall order, but let's try to start that conversation here this afternoon. 